Hi, I'm Fatima from Fatima Photography and I'm a baby and wedding photographer. Today I would like to share with you how I edited this baby girl's photo, especially the backdrop, not just her skin. In my studio I don't use a backdrop stand, I usually just have the parents help out by lifting it up or an assistant or a friend if I have one on the day. Ultimately, if all fails, I will stuff the backdrop underneath it with some pillows or some backdrops to um, just uh, crunch them all up, some blankets I meant to say, just crunch them all up and just pop them under the blanket and it'll give it that bit of a rise. Especially if you have a big bean bag, then that should work. Other than that, what you can do is um, sit on your bean bag or like with your face, like just punch it really, really hard and just keep like applying pressure on that side of the bean bag where you're gonna put the baby. So don't do that while the baby is in there. And um, you'll see that the back of the backdrop will slightly lift up because you're pushing the beans to go here because you want this lower. So it'll create some sort of an effect like this. This is where you'll put your baby and your backdrop will already be ri lifted, risen. Um, so yeah, you won't have to do any hard editing there. It's probably the edges that you're going to want to paint off. Um, other than that, I think it's a fab, fab idea not to have a backdrop stand because it really takes a lot of space and I find that I work a lot more freely with it where I can rotate my bean bag just to get the light because I sometimes use natural light so I like to move with the light just to see where it's best so um, without further ado let's get started cute editing video so we have this baby girl's photo um, she's so cute but as you can see we've got a problem with our backdrop so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try and separate the backdrop from our baby from the subject um, so I've already edited this photo uh, skin wise and um, uh, as well as basic edit in camera raw um, I'll show you the quick a quick photo of the sock Alright, so this is um, the sock like from the back of the camera, so I've obviously edited um, all the red spots and the such, uh, as well as the flakes. I used mostly frequency separation for this, as well as the um, a patch tool, and uh, just to clean up, uh, to clean up the skin, which is uh, you can find in my last uh, video how I use frequency separation to edit red spots. So let's get back to our photos. Obviously I don't want to go through this uh, with you again because that'll just make the video longer and the whole point is the backdrop. So let's get on with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and crop the, uh, the photo a bit more. So I'll grab my um, crop tool right here and if you have the new Photoshop um, CC then you should have content aware when, when you choose to use uh, the crop tool so I'm gonna click that just because I need more space above the hat here so I can work freely so we're just going to um, fill this bit up I don't think it matters how how big you go but um, try to make it as um, as close as possible because you get this weird stuff here so don't panic it's okay we can just uh, use your patch tool to get rid of any um, I don't know uh, cloning from this uh, tool what you basically can do if you zoom in and you replace it with a side that is cleaner and it'll work. Not really important that you do all of this um, because we're gonna paint uh, on top of this but to, because we're gonna be painting on very low opacity because we, we still because we still want it to blend in with our original backdrop here oops here so yeah just a tiny bit of cleaning up and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select our um, quick selection tool 
and with the plus you just go round the edges of what you want to keep that you don't want to paint over. So this is a very similar video to an earlier video I did last year, um, but the only difference is that this one actually requires uh, a bit more work and it's a little bit different than that one, if that makes sense. So I'm happy with the selection, it doesn't have to be perfect. So we're going to click Select Unmask. Uh, the computer already saved uh, the settings from when I did this uh, last time. Uh, you can either copy paste uh, these settings right here on the right hand side, or you can play around with your photo and see how it'll look like see how it feels. So the basic thing is that you want to kind of have your edge here uh, a bit further to the subject so we don't have any black lines here because obviously the the background is a lot darker than the background that we want to go for, the white one. So there will be like a black line outlining the edges. So what we want to do is use the shift edge and try to bring that down onto the negative side so it'll get more of my subject so when I paint over it, it'll blend in. So I'll just click OK and it'll create a background copy with a mask on it. So I will basically create an, a layer, an empty layer, and I'll choose my brush, take a sample of the original backdrop color, and on 20 opacity, I will start painting. Um, so this is going to be some sort of a, a process where you go back and go forwards and keep painting and stuff until it looks right. Because um, we've got obviously our shadows and stuff for the light, it can't be a solid color and you can't just um, paint with 100 opacity because then it'll look too fake. So you need to just keep um, taking samples every now and again while you're painting from each side so you'll match the backdrop that you have. And you want what you want to do also is kind of go over the original backdrop and um, blend that in as well with the color because we obviously have creases and stuff. Um, it's obviously a choice if you want to keep your creases but that's you know that's absolutely up to you. This is what, what I like to do. Um, I still like to keep it looking natural so I won't get rid of the creases completely. So I'm going to up my opacity a little bit right now, uh, just because this side needs a bit more um, work because of the very dark background. So this is one of the things that I love about the quick selection tool where it separates uh, bits of the photos that you don't want to work on, bits of the photos that you don't want to touch, that you're happy with, and then you can work on that without actually getting onto the actual uh, subject. So right now, you, as you can see, there is that line that I'm talking about here, right here, there's a line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the layer mask, uh, right here in the background copy and with my red uh, with my black brush sorry on opacity I will say 70 I will start painting onto that dark line because I want it to uh, blend in with my um, with the hat because it just looks um, a bit like you know a cut and paste so Obviously, uh, you can switch your um, background and foreground color for the brush with this uh, here, right here, and or X on your keyboard to switch between them to go back and forth to paint off and paint on. Um, so yeah, I'll just keep doing that until it looks right.
so it looks a lot better now um, now that we've basically painted off uh, the the folds in the background uh, as you can see it's a lot lot more nicer so I'm going to be flattening my image my image right now and I'm going to make a copy of my background and I'm going to open up liquify because I need to fix these uh, the side of the hat it just feel because obviously with hats and and stuff they don't always um, come out how I like them to come out naturally so sometimes a bit of liquify is needed just to give it that extra um, I don't want to call it perfection but just to, to make it more pleasing to the eye um, how we all like symmetry basically so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pushing this a little bit inside uh, with the um, forward warp tool and pushing bits outside as well just to give it that more of a round look and a lot of people struggle with using the liquify tool but all I can say honestly is that you just need to practice you just need to keep practicing okay <laughs> practicing uh, using the liquify tool because it really does take um, some patience and some some time but if you can get it if you can get practicing then you'll get there quicker than you can than you think and you'll be able to spot the bits where it doesn't look natural because obviously because I like for an example here where I've pushed in pushed out a few bits of the hat um, it started looking a bit unnatural this side of where her um, uh, for, uh, forehead meets her arm so that needs a little bit of pushing in too so you'll be able to spot things like that um, once you use the liquify tool quite a lot so yeah I think I'm happy with it here we're gonna click OK what we can do is then see the before and after and you can already tell that it's a lot more pleasing uh, a lot more round and it's perfect I hope you guys enjoyed this very short video of how I edited this backdrop I hope it helps you out and if you have any requests of any kind of uh, videos that you would like to learn uh, in Photoshop please let me know you can either contact me on um, my email or uh, down on the comments you can just leave a comment there and I'll make sure I get back to it if I can so yeah thank you very much and I'll speak to you again next time bye